Hello everyone and welcome back to another video. I'm the Gamers Digester and if you're anything like me, of course you're excited for Starfield. Now, um, I've been a little nervous watching some of these videos and uh, interviews that Todd Howard has been doing. Of course, we've been burned before. Cyber er, uh, Fallout 76 was a uh, pretty rough game. I don't even think that needs to be said. You, you, We all got burned. Um, Cyberpunk 2077, I feel like, has a lot of similarities with Starfield as far as my emotions and feelings towards it during this initial period of... Uh, kind of waiting for the game both had their share of delays and both touted and, and claimed incredible things um i am doubtful that starfield will be uh i don't even know how to say this it will be playable but will it be fun i don't want to be a negative nelly I, I don't, I, I like to look at the, the positive things, but recently the gaming space has been pretty rough as far as um, how it's treated us for launches. And that's not necessarily anything that the developers can do. Uh, when you have these incredibly huge games running on these engines, um, th th there's so many things that can go wrong. You've got, you have so many different people you're trying to please. It needs to work on lower end systems and work on 4090s and look good still. It, it's it's hard to do all of that and still keep things under the radar. You need enough people to test these games out and figure out the bugs and what is wrong. Um, and I, looking at Starfield um, a, after we've had Cyberpunk come out and looking at it with that kind of uh, view in mind, one of the first things that comes to my mind is CS2 and what I I'm, I'm meaning uh, Counter Strike Two. If you're unfamiliar, I'll kind of break down what they've been doing with that because I feel like it's genius. It's really, really mean to me because I don't have access and, and I don't feel like enough people have access, but I just want to play it. I want to get in. But what Counter-Strike 2 has been doing that is different is they are going map by map, giving limited access to amounts of people and using them as beta testers. Everyone can see what the map looks like, the changes that they've made. It's a little bit different because with these story games, you don't want anything spoiled. But this is one of the ways that they are able to do it, and it's brilliant. If you have kept up at all on Twitter with Counter-Strike and the bugs people are able to find, they're game-breaking. They could not have launched the game in the state that it was when, when they announced it, that it was going to be live in summer. It would have been a total disaster. People would have quit the game. It was horrible, but they're able to take the time and fix these things as a cohesive team and as a community where no one gets upset because no one is getting affected by this in a negative way. All these funny game breaking glitches that they're finding aren't aren't that negative in the long run because now that everyone's aware of them, they're able to get fixed in a timely manner before the actual release. I'm not entirely sure what Starfield could do. I think that launching this uh, a little bit early, um, now I, I'll say this in a way that doesn't hopefully come off uh, how I'm not meaning it, but for the people who pre-order the game, which will definitely be me, you're well aware that you're going to be getting five days early access. Now what I'm thinking is going to happen, and I'd love to hear your guys' thoughts and opinions on this, I'm kind of thinking that is a five day beta, uh, closed beta if you will. Because I, I can totally see that if there are game-breaking glitches, stuff like that, they'll use that five-day period to make the game in a much more playable state for the people who want to purchase it after the fact. How do I feel about that? As long as I am able to progress a couple hours into the game without having any major game-breaking glitches, stuff like resetting my data or not allowing me to progress, I feel like I'll be able to, to survive. Uh, this this game potentially could be something that we could sink hundreds of hours into. So I'm not going to sit down and play for 16 hours straight on launch day. I'm going to pace this out and give myself time and as well give the developers time to fix bugs that might happen later on in the game. Um, of course, there are people who are trying to make money and, and make content for these games. Um, there absolutely have been people like that for Diablo and, and other releases. They want to get through it as fast as they can. Uh, if you watch anyone who does playthroughs, someone like the Rad Brad, I love him. He uh, likes to play through games at an incredible rate. 
It's people like that who will see and have the worst experience at launch. Now, the only solution that I can think of, unfortunately, for Starfield is to just take your time. And I know that a lot of people might not want to hear that, but it, it, it might be the best way to get the best experience. One thing that I've noticed with these AAA games is they'll make the very beginning sequences very polished. Because for some people, if I go on my Steam library and check my friends list and, and see what games we have in common, a lot of them, my friends have only played like four or five hours, maybe 10 hours in some of these big AAA games like Cyberpunk. And I think part of that is one, they might just lose interest. But I think the developers are aware, aware of that. And in order to leave a good taste in the uh, consumer's mouth, they'll make sure that those first few hours are very tailored and are very um, polished. So um, I think that during this five day uh, open beta, if you will, that we're going to have access to, um, I'd suggest you take your time because if we've learned anything from Fallout 76, which, which was Bethesda, it may have been a, a separate team that wasn't their main team. It still was Bethesda. And we did get burned. And I and I don't want... There's Unfortunately, there is a lot riding on this. Whether uh, Bethesda wants to, to say it or not, I know Todd kind of... Uh, they brought this to his attention. There's a lot riding on this. After the acquisition that Xbox did with Bethesda, um, it's, it's kind of like all eyes are on this right now. Uh, I don't know how you guys feel about that, but I, I do feel like this is a big deal. Not enough to tank Xbox by any means. They've got Microsoft, and Microsoft is like 100 times bigger than Sony. So regardless of what happens, um, I think Xbox as a whole will be okay. Just the perception of it might be a little bit bad. And I, unfortunately, I could see that being a real possibility. Um, console gaming has been in a, in a weird spot. Uh, with them kind of being put on the back burner for some of these recent PC, um, like kind of cross play games, uh, we'll, we really will just have to see. Um, handhelds play into this in the sense that I feel like they'll perform as well as some console games uh, as they play. Uh, Cause typically right now, like I, I'm, I feel like I'm getting the same performance that I would around this kind of performance, right? It, it feels like my Series X. When I played through Cyberpunk on my Series X, it kind of feels like how it does on the Ally here. So whenever I look at a AAA game, I think back to when I played it on my Series X and think, if I can at least get close to that on my Ally, I'll be okay. Or on my on my handheld Steam Deck, whatever your whatever your preference is, then I'll be okay. If it's a little bit less than that, I'll be okay. As long as the game is somewhat recognizable and playable, I'll be fine. Um, there is certain instances where PC and uh, handheld have the advantage where they can turn certain settings off that by default the developers make you have selected, which I find kind of interesting, but uh, that it is what it is. But yeah, uh, I know that was kind of a, a quick little rant there uh, or uh, just discussion, but I'd love to hear you guys' thoughts and opinions on this. I, I know we've got a little bit more to go before we start seeing some of these bigger AAA games. Uh, in my previous video that I filmed today, I mentioned um, Avatar Frontiers of Pandora. I'm actually very excited for that game. I don't know how some of you guys felt about the movies, I thought that the most recent movie was, it was okay. Uh, I feel like it is pushing CGI to a place that we've never seen. As far as the story goes, it's definitely just a stepping stone in the uh, massive universe that is Avatar. Uh, hopefully things will be getting a little bit better um, and that, that this was kind of just a, a filler movie. But um, I'm very excited for that whole universe. I'm uh, stoked to see this video game. I know that uh, Ubisoft has done great jobs uh, with uh, games like Far Cry. So I, I think they've got the formula down. They've got an excellent universe and sandbox to play with. We'll have to see how it performs. It, it all comes down to that now. What I remember back in the day when a game would get announced for the 360 when I was younger. I cannot remember. I, I may just be looking at this through a, a, a nostalgic lens, but games like Destiny, games uh, like... Uh, Call of Duty, some of those more like AAA games that had money behind them. Um, I'd love to hear your guys' thoughts. Do you feel like there was any older titles on for PS3 and Xbox 360, and, and even maybe a little bit older than that, that you felt like the development was rushed? Or, or maybe the story was there, but the gameplay was just garbage. I just can't remember. 
I just, I, I think we're in a very interesting time where game developers have such a wide audience to cater for. I mean, hell, I'm playing Cyberpunk 2077 on a handheld device that is like a tenth of the size of a Series X and I'm playing it on here. Were they expecting that? Probably not at the time, but I, they're, they're definitely making room for it to play on here. So I, I find it very interesting and I think developers have a much harder time uh, now than ever. So um, for me, I'm just going to have to be patient with these launches and, and just see if things get ironed out over time. I don't know if they will, um, but I, I'm here to be patient. Um, I've been patient for a lot of launches. I mean, I purchased Cyberpunk two and a half years ago, you guys. I, I had this pre-ordered. And here I am now, two and a half years later, giving it the playthrough that it deserves. Um, I, I definitely was not doing that back then. And I kind of feel like I've... Ooh, give me that car. Sorry. No, 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 no. Oh, I got to choose. Okay, sorry. ADHD brain kicking in there for a second. I'm going to give the developers their time. And uh, unfortunately, if that means we we have to wait a few years, uh, so be it. But I think that Starfield has an incredible potential with the team that's behind it, with the amount of money, with the amount of eyes on it. There's no way that it can completely flop, but I'm, I'm not super optimistic for the launch, if I'm going to be honest here. But with that, uh, I hope you guys have had a, an incredible weekend so far. I know that I have. I'm looking forward to 4th of July. Um, and hopefully you guys can kick back with family and just enjoy yourselves. Because I, I know that as the year goes on, things get a little bit harder. It's going to start cooling off here. And uh, we're going to get back, kind of put our nose down, get back to work. But we got to enjoy the summer while we can. And uh, I hope you guys have a fantastic week. Peace out, y'all.